this week, I'm going to run you through my process of making a sheet metal part from start to finish, from 3D scanning, modeling, bending, folding, laser cutting, and fabricating the final part. Step one of the process is to 3D scan the floor pan, give me a reference to model the sheet metal part from. I'll be using the PL3 because that's what we have in our workshop, but you can use any 3D scanner out there in the market. Even your phone will do a pretty good job. So as you can see on this floor pan, there's not a lot of reference for the peel to pick up. So we use these positioning targets so the peel knows where it is in space at any time. This is easy as putting them down, sticking them anywhere within 150 mil. That's what I found works best. The peel gives two indications of how far to hold the scanner away. There's a green light up here. If you get too close, it goes red. If you get too far away, it goes blue. You can see here that we're left with a really nice scan and that the tracking dots really helped with picking up all that detail in the flat surfaces. So I'll clean up this floor pan in this CAD software that peels provide and get it sent straight to Fusion. So I've went ahead and modeled the two battery boxes in the sheet metal workspace. Notice how the parts protrude the scan. So we're just going to show you how to clean these up and get an accurate model for the laser cutter to cut. First step is to create a mesh section sketch using the scan as the body and the side of the part as the section plane. I'll go ahead and do that to all four sides of the box. This leaves me with four sketches that I can use to cut away this sheet metal part. Now that we have these projections, we can go back into the sketch and use the tool fit curves to mesh section. This will allow me to put a spline on the projected line. I can then extrude this line as a surface and then repeat this for the other four sides. Once I have all the surfaces thickened, I can then combine them all together, creating one solid part. I can then use this part to cut the original box, leaving us with a cut plane of the floor. Once that's complete, then we can create a flat pattern of the sheet metal part. We can then export this as a DXF. If you want to learn more about CAD, we go into much more detail on our CAD course, which is available on our website at hpacademy.com. I then send our DXF files to Focal, which is our local laser cutter. Once they're done laser cutting, they then clean their parts and CNC folded them to our specification. And here's what we're left with. So here we have our faceplate. Our nut plate, two parts of our battery clamp, and the base of our battery clamp. So that's all the parts out of the way. And here's the final product. Let's jump into the fab room and get these welded and finished. So I'm choosing to use the TIG welder for this battery box as it produces a cleaner weld and easier to clean up when it comes to polishing it. So I'll just give you a quick overview of the tools that I'm going to use on this project. We've got a linisher a grinder, a die grinder, and a dual action sander. Step one is to tack up all the areas of the box to stop movement during the welding process. Step two will be welding the nuts to the nut plate and welding the nut plate to the box. Step three will be welding up all the areas we tacked previously. This will create a strong unified body. Now that we finished the fabrication, let me run you through the process that I used to make the box look like a one piece seamless construction. I'll quickly show you the techniques I used to achieve this finish. Step one of the process is using a grinder and a flap disc to remove the bulk of the weld. We'll then use a die grinder to remove those deep scratches that the grinder left. Moving on from there, we'll use a DA sander, starting with 120 grit, going up to 320 grit, and then following up with a scotch pad. So I hope some of the techniques I used in this video help you out in your project. Comment down below if you've had going on at the moment.